for countdown for launch, all the way up to the point uh, 30 seconds after second stage ignition, we provide the capability to pull the crew module and therefore the crew away from whatever emergency that may be or a failed launch vehicle. As part of our development, we will have several flight tests leading up to the first crewed flight uh, in 2013. What I'd like to show you is an animation that uh, represents one of those particular flight tests that will be occurring out in the desert. And this particular one that we'll be looking at utilizes a booster that carries us up on a trajectory that would represent what the crew launch vehicle might to carry the uh, Orion spacecraft during the ascent. As you see, the booster has now lifted us away, and we would have what we would determine at a preset point in the altitude what might be a constitute a failed launch vehicle. The abort motors would then fire along with the attitude control motor along the top, helping steer the trajectory of the launch abort vehicle at this point, which is the launch abort system and the crew module. We would then, at a predetermined time, reorient the launch abort system such that the crew module is facing away from that particular failed vehicle. The launch abort system would jettison. Drove chutes would then deploy, pulling away the covers for the main parachutes and also slowing the descent of the crew module. Then these chutes would fall away from the capsule and it would continue to descend in the atmosphere. And then the main chutes would deploy. And the main chutes would go through a sequence of slowing the descent of the vehicle down and we'll watch that just for a few seconds. And what you'll see is the chutes at various times, the reefing of the chutes. And then we'll watch the heat shield fall away from the vehicle and the airbags deploy. And these are the airbags similar to the ones that John just showed you that were being tested here at Langley Research Center preparing for the landing. Now the chutes have fully deployed. and the descent of the vehicle continues to decrease uh, in velocity to a point where it is then safe where the airbags would uh, then arrest any further <clears throat> shock that the crew might experience upon landing. And you see the landing here and the uh, airbag operation. So that basically is the concept of how the launch abort system will operate and an example of one of the tests that we'll be conducting. That particular one will be conducted in September 2009. We have several other tests, such as one uh, in September 2008 that we'll be performing that will represent a uh, abort from the pad. We've got an exciting opportunity in front of us to carry a crew to safety, and uh, we look forward to the adventure that we're on right now and the privileges that are, have been extended to us to be part of this great adventure that we're on. So now I'd like to turn it over to Frank to talk about the program that he's involved with. Thanks, Greg. It's my great pleasure to uh, provide you an update for the Exploration Technology Development Program and to show you how it will enable our vision for space exploration. The uh, technology program provides risk reduction for the Constellation program. That is, it provides technologies that allow Orion and Ares and the Lunar Lander projects to succeed and to not have any undue risks upon them so that they can meet their performance objectives within cost and schedule. The NASA's Langley Research Center, as has been mentioned, has been assigned the program management role for that program. And although the Langley Research Center is the program manager, the uh, technology work is done across the entire agency. This work is, uh, leverages the skills of the civil servant and contractor workforce across the agency to bring these uh, technologies to bear upon Constellation. Uh, many objectives for the technology program, of course, include advancing the state of the art in various disciplines, including life support systems, propulsion systems, structures and materials, robotics, avionics, and software, to name a few. Uh, as well, the program helps inform the mission designers and the architects so that they can make timely decisions to help us understand where the risks are, what particular architectures are required to do those, uh, to implement those projects, and to make those decisions in a timely fashion early on so that we can be most effective in developing the flight projects. Finally, the investments are focused on specific objectives and they're sustained over a period of time so that we can make sure that those uh, risks are retired so that Constellation can be successful. There are several, uh, many rich investments and accomplishments in this program. For today, I'd like to highlight just two, if we can have our first chart, please. 
Uh, on the right, on the top, you see a demonstration of a test firing of a new propulsion system that we're investing in. This, this propulsion system is unique in that it uses methane as a fuel rather than uh, the more traditional hydrogen systems that have been used and some of the other more toxic uh, materials that have been used in the past. The advantage of using a system such as this is that uh, it enables us to potentially use the resources on both the Moon and Mars as a source for the fuel. Of course, what that allows us to do is to not have to carry as much fuel with us, and as has been mentioned earlier, mass is a significant uh, contributor to the performance of the vehicle and the, the extent that we can reduce mass by not bringing as much fuel with us and, returning and, and creating that fuel while we're on the Mars or on, on the Moon will allow us to have a more uh, uh, higher performance uh, vehicle system. Uh, on the lower picture on the left, you see a series of robotic uh, vehicles that are performing in an autonomous fashion and in a collaborative fashion uh, that allows the astronauts to perform more uh, exploration uh, activities rather than the more mundane maintenance activities that uh, have been done in the past. You see a series of activities. You see a, a rover in the far background that would uh, house astronauts uh, in the very near fore foreground is a small vehicle that was developed at the Ames Research Center that performs more maintenance issues and, and, um, and repair uh, problems. And in the, the mid-ground, you see a, uh, a vehicle that looks similar to an astronaut, but it has the dexterity and ability to manipulate objects, to carry tools, and to provide a help and assistance for astronauts while they are actually doing their uh, expo experimentation and exploration of the surface. Um, these, these activities are profound for the, for the mission director because they allow the Constellation program to focus in on achieving its missions in the near term while allowing the uh, rest of the mission director to focus on the activities that are enabling for the future. While Constellation's focus is, of course, getting to low Earth orbit, our focus is, of course, enabling those activities and looking towards the future and ensuring that we have a sustainable program that can ensure that the astronauts have a... Uh, an exploration uh, basis from which to uh, move forward. Uh, I hope that uh, offers you a brief uh, glimpse at the program, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. And reporters present, if you would, before asking your question, uh, wait for the microphone, then identify yourself and your affiliation. Who wants to go first? Okay, Mike. I'm Mike Harvey, Chief Meteorologist for News Channel 3. My question is, what is the timeline as far as the Constellation program, the Ares-1, uh, the Orion, heading up to the space station, going to the moon, uh, putting man back on the moon, and as far as going on to Mars? Okay. I can go ahead and uh, answer that, thanks. The, um, the overall timeline, um, major milestones, we talked about some of the test milestones, is that the Ares-1 with the Orion will have IOC, which is initial operating capability, which means we can put a crew in the vehicle and fly it to the space station by March of 2015. Um, the goal to get uh, people back on the moon to start uh, building up uh, the outpost on the moon is to do that by the year 2020. So those are the two big dates and milestones. And then there's all the milestones obviously building up to that. We saw flight tests starting in 08 and 09. But initial operating capability right now is uh, March of 2015. And looking further past that as far as uh, your plans for Mars? There's no date for Mars. Uh, as